Hi there! Hey! Hello! Welcome back. We've been posting up videos like mad. We have. Yeah. I mean, so many that people are still trying to catch up. Yeah. I'm still trying to catch up. I haven't watched all of them. Neither I've, I've watched all the way up to the last one where we start off Strange Ways. Uh, but along that line, we're continuing Strange Ways. And what do you have there, Mark? Oh, it's just, uh, I bought this long time ago. It's a Strange Ways music uh, book with all the lyrics and the musical notation for piano and guitar and stuff. Anyway, so, uh, and it's got some cool pictures in there. Um, well, uh, this is Kaz, one of Kaz's last, probably. Second to last one. Second to last uh, thing, as you can see. <laughs> the handsome hooligan has traded in his his uh his hooligan just for handsome <laughs> for a smith's t-shirt and and he's trading in the smiths for another smith, <laughs> smith. <laughs> so hey if you guys are in florida and uh, you see this guy riding around on a bicycle he's gonna have a black name tag um in uh tampa area sup by tell him you love the smith's cast yeah. and and uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, so we're gonna we're gonna miss him here, leaving in a couple of days, right? Yeah. When's uh, next week? Wednesday. Yeah. So we'll try to get this posted before he leaves. And we'll still we'll we'll still. Uh, Mark and I will still be try, doing this try to do this stuff. We're yeah. probably gonna lose all our viewers. <laughs> yeah. like, but we still got stuff to talk gone. about. But we wanted to be sure to get through the Smiths. We've started something that we could finish. Thank you very much. Yes. Unlike Morrissey. No, he finished it. Well, but the song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More like it finished him. <laughs> yeah, no, it finished the Smiths, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, um, so today we're going to be, we're going to uh, continue along the, down the strange ways. Yep. Here we come. So we're going to cover, a, we're, we're going to try to get through a lot of songs, so we're gonna go. We're just gonna blast through them as quickly as possible, and hopefully uh, give a little bit of insight and a little bit of background. Yeah. And uh, then we should be good. Okay. Yeah. So the first song um, uh, is gonna be "Girlfriend in a Coma." Just to let you know, this is one. Go ahead. Uh, this is one that they actually wrote while they're re-recording "Sheila Take a Bow." This is yeah. one they did before they did this. Went to the studio, the Wool Studio, or whatever it's called. The Wool, wool Hall. Wool Hall, yes, yeah, studio. Uh, so the Ian McCulloch yeah. studio. Anyway, yeah. So uh, we got check. Listen to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a little interesting tidbit is this one had a music video. Yes, yeah. it did. With, uh, and it was, I think it was, it, you were talking about it. Yeah, so it had so they were given twelve uh, a budget of twelve thousand uh, twelve thousand pounds. And That's a lot of pounds. <laughs> That'll crush somebody. Yeah, no. <laughs> like here you go. <laughs> this huge money sack. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, Shut so anyway, th they were given a budget of twelve thousand uh, pounds sterling for two videos. This one and stop me if you think you've heard this one before. And they, they brought out Tim Broad to be the director. Mm -hmm. And he tried to slap things together because 12,000 12, for two videos is very, very cheap. Um, I was telling Mark earlier, post prod or post production could easily cost you 10,000 uh, 10,000 pounds just in post production. That's not including all the all the rentals that you have to buy for the cameras, for the for the talent, for the for everybody. Because it's not just the band that's in it; it's the people behind the scenes. It's the it's the well, cameraman, it's the director, it's the producer. All those people need to get paid for this. Well, if you've seen Girlfriend in a Coma video, it's just Morrissey. So yeah, he's the talent. <laughs> Well, well no, but no. It, it, no, but I'm just saying it's him singing and it keeps on fading out to yep. different. And, um, well, 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 that's what I'm saying. Talent is, is there just in the background in that one. Yeah, yeah, there a is. Lady but I, from it, old movie or something. Yeah, but the thing is, is the talent isn't just the person in front of the camera. It's also uh, yeah, everybody people, behind but, it too. Yeah. So, so it wasn't a lot of money. I mean, as in Rough Trade's way, even after they begged to have them back, they took them to dismiss the court to have them back. They're still skimping on. Yeah. It's like that time where, where uh, Jeff Travis gave Morrissey a bag of crisps. <laughs> to, oh, great job. And he said it still had the, 
it was like for uh, two pounds. So I put two pounds sticker on it. That's that's like the be- the biggest thing that uh, they got from uh, Jeff Travis. He never took them out to dinner or anything. He never just celebrate. Anyway, sucks for them. Yeah. Um, but by this time, Morrissey had said that uh, Rough Trade had become a uh, nursing home for old uh, for old battle veterans. <laughs> yeah. Dang it, I thought I had. Yeah. Shoot. So, yeah, Cass, while well, he's looking for that, you you have something? Uh, did they shoot uh, the videos after the Smiths had broken up? Yes. The, so, uh, Johnny Marr had already left by this point. Well, there was, there was one that, oh, this is interesting, I is that they tried to shoot a video. I don't know. I don't remember what, what song it was for. Is during this. This is towards the end, and Morrissey didn't, wouldn't come. Or he would didn't show up, and Johnny Marr ended up. They all ended up outside of his house, and Johnny Marr's like, "Don't do this." And Morrissey was talking through the little postal. <laughs> <laughs> then he wouldn't even come out, and he said it, it was kind of the you know I uh, not ironic, but kind of the flip of whenever he first met, where Johnny Marr came to his house wow. and Morrissey welcomed him in, and they started. It was the opposite of that, and that was you know at the end. Dang it, man. I have a a song that I want to play that's, uh, oh, I thought I downloaded it. What song? Uh, Young, Gifted, and Black. Um, let me just look it up real quick. Okay. Keep talking, yeah. guys. Tell, tell, oh, Sorry. there it is. All right. You got it? Yeah. Okay. To be young, gifted, and black. Okay. <laughs> Interesting note is okay, so play play a little bit of Girlfriend in a Coma. Okay. So you got you got kind of a subtle like rip, kind of a rock steady kind of Yeah. But very subtle. Yeah. And that's the way the Smiths do it. Sometimes a lot of times whenever they've done things, at first you're like, whoa, that's way out there, and then they tone it down and it becomes yeah. more Smithsy. So they they based this this song on uh, Bob and Marsha. They're they're a rock steady group from uh, the seventies. Yep. Um, and they they uh, they had an album called Young, Gifted, and Black. And this is just the song to be Young, Gifted, and Black. So I want you to hear this and kind of listen for the influence. Okay. a fun gift, you know, a little like, and a girlfriend to come in. So this, this, uh, this rock steady kind of stuff was, was, uh, actually this is one of the early stuff that Morrissey and Johnny Marr listened to. Yeah. So when some of the early records that they bonded over, you know, whenever yep. they're starting to smith. So you hear that and you're like, wait, I can kind of hear the influence, but, um, there's, I have, I have a, uh, oops. I got all kinds of stuff up here. <laughs> um, dang it. Let's see. I think it's on here. Okay, so so you you can kind of hear it, but in in one of the earlier in the early demo of the of Girlfriend in Coma, you can hear it a lot more. So Anyway, so you can, you know, so uh, you can hear that influence a lot more yeah. in that, you know, that that version, and then, you know, that's that's the thing about having a good uh, a producer, uh-huh. like Stephen Street. It was he's the producer, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that they can take things and say, okay, well that's good, but let's put that in the background so it doesn't sound totally like it, you know? Yeah. And that's I love when Smiths do that, where you're like. You can get, you can kind of hear the influence, but it's far enough away to that it's not a straight rip off or not a rip off. But I don't mean yeah. to say rip off, but uh, that it's not a, a straight take where you're like, oh, that sounds just like this. No, it doesn't because yeah. play girlfriend to come a little more. And then you got the strings, but anyway. So.
so yeah. you you end up with that, which is what a good producer and you know yeah. band getting together will do. Anyway, so what do you guys want to say about this song? Cows? Um, it's a fun little uh, ditty. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, it is fun. I don't it's, know. It's I like the bit the huge contrast with like like we said the the kind of like fun beat to it. But then it's all about this girl and a girlfriend in a coma. You know, let's, uh, I like at the end too, he's, some of his worries are, are interesting. Let's see. Like, it's almost like he doesn't want her to come out of the coma. Well, it's a lot easier to have a girlfriend in a coma because then she can't uh, break up with you. She can't say no either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, yikes. Yikes! Weinstein! You just got Weinstein! <laughs> okay. So, do you really think she'll pull through? Do you really think she'll pull through? Let me whisper my last goodbyes. I know it's serious. Yeah. There's like, oh, I don't want to see her here. And then later on, would you please let me see her? He's desperate. It's just, it's just an interesting... There were times when I could have strangled her, you know? Well, like, uh, uh, she drove me crazy. There's times where I could have... So it's like this thing, you know what, it happens. Even even if a girlfriend's not in a coma, but if you get broken up with, you know, you're like, like, oh. You start remembering all the good memories and the bad memories and anyway. Yeah, well, okay, so if we take it for face value and very literal, like his girlfriend is in a, in a coma, he knows it's serious, there's times when he could have murdered her but he didn't want anything to happen to her. No, Maybe I don't want to see her. Coma. No, what what I'm saying is, oh. if you look at it, like, Mark is married. I'm married, obviously, because, you know, I got a kid. Oh, here. well, and that proves you're married. Well, you know, because we've talked about Elise no, being my wife, so that's why. But, like, if anything happened to my, to my wife or to me, and I was in a coma, or my wife was in a coma... I don't know that I'd want to go see her because it, oh, yeah. it's so it's frustrating. That, it's almost like not that person, too. They're just like yeah. sitting there. And the other thing, even when he says there were times when I could have murdered her, but I don't want anything to happen to her, it's what I tell my wife. is like, if I'm ever in a state where you know I'm in a coma or I'm just like unresponsive and they don't know that I'm going to get out, pull the plug, man. Here. Steve, I, I just heard you. I'll do that. Yeah. I'm going to <laughs> Because the thing is, is I'm gonna sneak I don't want to. I don't want to live in that state. I don't want anybody to live in that state because it's just like if your mind is active and you can hear everybody around you, but you can't do anything about that. That is like the worst prison in the world. It's like did you don't ever, be there. Did you ever don't read be that a part of it. With Johnny comes marching home. Yeah. Or that 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 book's really good. Yeah. Where that he's paralyzed and he's. It's all in his head, and he's having all these memories, and he's yeah. trying. Then he figures out how to communicate, and then the doctors just end up medicating him. Yeah. At the end, because they're like, "Wait, he's saying something." They're like, oh, "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. But but I mean, if we take it very literally like that, I could see that it's like I don't want to see her. Um, you know, I, you know, there are times when I could have murdered her because I just don't want her to be in the state. But then it's like. I love her so much. I want to be with her. Please let me see her. But at the same time, there's that yeah, huge conflict struggle. of of trying to understand what is you know what you really want out of it because at some point you, you gotta you, you have to deal with it. It's like is she really I think my girlfriend? Pulls or? The plug because he says, "Let me let's whisper my last goodbyes." I know it's serious. You know, yeah. it's like, do you really think she's gonna pull through? But she's she's not. He's finally come to terms. Like I don't want to see her. I do want to see her. And then oh, you really think? And then let me whisper my last goodbyes. I know I'm serious. I don't know or not. Yeah. And it's like what? that's that's if we take it. That's it. That's if we take it in a literal sense. Like she actually is in a literal coma. I mean, this could, she could also be, be in a food coma. Well, no, this could be a figurative. That's for Thanksgiving. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was in a Mark is in a coma. <laughs> in front of the TV, in front of the TV, <laughs> watching football. Anyway. So, but anyway, I mean, we could take it more figuratively where she's just like non-responsive to him and like, oh, hi, it's Mark. He's my boyfriend. Oh, okay. that could be. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be figuratively too. It's like, you know, I know it's serious. I know that, you know, I know our relationship is serious, but she's not really giving me any attention whatsoever. So she's kind of like, quote unquote, in a coma because she's not interacting with me at all. 
And so that could, you know, be that too, but... Could be. Yeah, anyway, it's a cute, super cute song. Yep. Fun song, but on a very heavy subject, so it was like this cool contrast. Juxtaposition. Huh. Ooh, word of the day. Juxtaposition, nice. Nice! <laughs> word of the day! Juxtaposition. <laughs> okay, so... Um, uh, is there anything else you guys want to say about that um, no. song? Because next, wait. Do you want to say anything Dang, about it? Oh no, no, no. Uh oh. Uh -oh. What? So, I just want you to know. What's your favorite song? He's pointing for some reason at that part. Of it. That part. That part. <laughs> okay, okay. Turns out we don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. We got copyrighted material here. Uh -oh. So we're gonna take it down a little bit. Okay. What, what were you pointing, trying to point out? The beats. Okay. Down beats. Oh, the. But it, it's German. yeah. It, it's not a. It's not one of those like depressing down beats and in, in the other Smith songs. No, it's a it's building. More, out. Yeah, it's a it, build up. Yeah, it's more like a, a marching song, like pow, pow. Pow, and then they go forward. Okay. Yeah, it has that that the bit. It's yeah, the beginning is that build up. Yeah. And uh, um, let's hear a little bit more of. Uh, sorry, I don't want to. That's fine. And we should just keep the whole song playing in the okay. you know down so. Okay, wait. Here, right. turn it up, turn. It. I was too late. I was way late. Anyway, uh, one thing uh, that is is kind of different about this album is that Johnny Marr has a lot bigger guitar parts. Yes, he's yeah. more up front. Because remember, I'm always like, why why is Johnny in the background doing his like? Yeah. A lot of times he's he puts himself in the background, you know. Because but in this one, he's just like, you know what? If I'm gonna do guitar, I'm gonna do guitar. I'm gonna That's rock right. it. And and not that he's like doing. You know, uh, solos like hair metal solos, like in that one song, uh, yeah. Shoplifters. You know, he's yeah. not doing solos, but he, so his guitar, solos. his huh? I'm not hating the solos, I'm loving them. Is that what you said? I mean, he does kind of have a little solo bit at the end on this, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, we'll get there. Well, I know, but I'm saying in this and on this album, he he when he is playing guitar. He's doing it more up front. Yeah. And, you know, he, he so he's kind of changing his the way he does it because everybody's like, oh, Johnny's a jingly jangly guy. And actually, there's one um, in the in the book uh, Stephen Street mentioned in the book uh, Songs That Saved Your Life. There's an interview with Stephen Street, and they were they were working on a song. I don't know what it, which song it was, but he was talking about how. Johnny actually kind of got upset once and was like, I'm not doing jingly jangly, this jingly jangly stuff. I'm doing something else, you know? Yeah. yeah. Kind of, and, and so it's kind of interesting. Where he like yelled into the microphone in the yeah. studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so... Because, you know, so, he was plastered. <laughs> well, yeah, he was, he had, that, that's the thing is that, yeah, he was drunk, you know? Oh, well, one, of the, one of the things interesting is one of the first things that they... Okay, let's let's talk about this song and then. Okay, so I'm sorry. When you bring that up, that's funny because one of the lines is, "Oh, so I drank one, or was it four? <laughs> and when well, I fell I always, to the floor, I drank more. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I always thought the lyric for that was. <laughs> I mean, it'll make sense. To we you ought guys. to have a we ought to have a new segment for the Smith Cast. I know. I was just Mark's, thinking Mark's lyrics. <laughs> I need mean, I need to just go through and write. Marcus. But no. So I I thought it was Marcus. -y. And so. <laughs> Marcus, yeah. It's, I thought it was so. I drank one. It became four. You know, wine one. It sounds like, but so one. You know, I had a drink, but then also the next thing I know, it became four. So I just never knew it was wine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he fell on the floor. And then I like this at the very end. Nothing's changed. I still love you. I still love you, but only slightly less than I used to. <laughs> oh, I remember. I I. Uh, that girl that I had a crush on in junior high, I wrote the lyrics to this on uh -huh. and put it in her locker through the thing. Uh -huh. You know, that nothing's changed, I still love you, but only slightly less than I used to. And then what'd she do, come up and slap you? How dare you like no, me less? She didn't care. 
She Kaz, didn't like she me. never even noticed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, Kaz, go ahead. Um, I don't know, Mark. What were you saying about the lyrics? They're good. No, about the whole. Oh, about how I miss. Oh yeah, so I I drank. So I drank one. Or was it for you? Said wine. Is no, that I what said it says wine. There? No, I said one. Oh, so I drank one, or was it four? Oh, uh, see, I always heard it. So I drank one. It became four. I know. I'm getting and over it a sounds cold. Like that. I know. I'm getting over a cold, so it's kind of hard to understand me. Hopefully, it comes through fine. You got a double dose. dose. Yeah, I got a double <laughs> dose. <laughs> can, you, can you actually go to uh, that bit in the song? I think I think he actually does. Yeah, you might be right. Sometimes he does change it. <laughs> Oh, you want me to go back that one? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I'll turn it down. Say so, yeah. yeah. It's coming up. I'm gonna stop me, I'm gonna stop me. No, keep it okay. up. Okay. Well, hold so, on. So, I'll, I'll get it. Yeah, because he does change the lyrics sometimes. Yeah. He, he does. Actually, reading over. Okay, here it comes. Nothing changed. I still love you. Oh, maybe. <laughs> what the oh, heck? Man. We're way back. Okay, it's coming up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so so we're coming up on it. Let's hear what Morrissey says. Okay. See? He definitely said Mark. He did. Marcusy. Was right. So I drank one. It became four. Yeah. It's not. Or was it four? Well, yes. These are the original lyrics. These are lyrics I know. by Morrissey. Well, <laughs> tell that to Morrissey when he's singing. No, but and his I, Heinz baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, he doesn't say Heinz baked beans in that part. <laughs> I grabbed you by the Heinz baked beans. <laughs> Vegetarian Heinz baked beans. Okay. So anyway. Okay. So. Um, so so we, I was right, finally. And there is accordion and symmetry gates. You know what? No, you are heard not. It? Kaz, it can be okay that he's right. You know why? Because even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> and it's twelve o'clock again. <laughs> it I, it right. must be yeah. Uh, the anyway, bass is really good. In so this finally, song. validation. Kaz just said the bass is really good. Oh yeah. Let's hear the bass. Give me some of that bass. I want to slap my face. That's one thing that I, I thought was... Especially uh, uh, when Morrissey is singing, although you can't hear it as well. Yeah. Um, but um, I kind of learned that because this song is actually one of the songs that you can get on Rock Band. The, yeah. the popular video game. You can? Yeah, yeah these uh, kids used to play it all the dang time. Oh, I used to play that too. You know how many we times We went on an endless hear? set list once. Oh, oh my gosh. What was that one song that you guys always sang all the freaking time? I don't know. It was probably the girls because they would only play girls. Like five songs. Oh, oh no, that really was. <laughs> <No. laughs> he was like that one more. Yes. Uh, that's an awesome song. Uh, it was probably like I Love Rock and Roll. Okay, so here's the little guitar. I mean, it's not that, you know, it's like, you know, I just think, I, the drums on this are really interesting. Like you said, the bass is kind of like different, but it goes with it. Johnny, Johnny said that him and, him and uh, uh, Andy Rourke were, you know, were so in sync. You know, I mean, not in sync, they, but they could, they kind of knew sometimes what each other wanted to do and they were able to sync up and make it sound good. Yeah. So they're... I, that's the thing is that this album is so much different even from Queen is Dead. Yes, like, it is. It's got a lot more di uh, sounds. Yeah, I, I think they were very on track together. Oh, yeah. Had they had they stayed around, because had they stayed around, I honestly think that this album would have come, the next album would have come in as, as number one. Oh, for sure. Because they were just like picking well, up Well, and, 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 and you got to remember that Morrissey's next album did come in at number one. Well, yeah. that was Viva Hate. Yeah. That was between him and Steven Street, though. I know, but it would have... Here's the thing. I think had the that, Smiths that not road. dissolved, this album would have come in at number one. Oh. Had they been on tour to promote it. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, one thing is that 
Oh, another thing is, uh, no, well, we won't get into that, but they had just yeah. come off a long tour. Yeah. And then they went right into the studio. They yeah, and I think they were just physically UK exhausted. Tour. And they, emotionally. And, and yeah. so it gets, towards the end of, of the session, anyway, we can talk about it, but there was a lot of riffs that, but let's move on to the next song. Let's kind of. Next song. Let's, but, yeah, let's uh, keep going through. Kaz, so, you got this next song, ooh, yeah. okay? I do. Oh, yep. interesting thing. BBC uh, record, The Sounds, is in this. Oh, yeah? That that crowd that you hear at the beginning, that's part of Morrissey's little um, BBC record collection of sounds. Yeah. yeah. And then The Whales, that's part of it, too. The Can you hear that in the back? Wait, you'll hear it if you hear it a little more. Dang. It's somewhere here. There it is. The there was that. That was a door, yeah. not. Oh, was that a whale? Yeah, I said that was a door. This was actually Sweet just door. Morrissey playing around with all the record players exactly. in the. Uh... So, anyway, you got. He so you got this. Skip it ahead. He you got this dramatically with all the mixers, the faders. I love that. The jingle bells or whatever it is. It, this is like a Christmas song, the saddest Christmas song ever. Okay, Baby, I'll please keep that. come home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kaz, take it, take off. Let's go. Um. Bam. Bam. Uh, this has some really well-known Smith lyrics. Okay. Sure. Uh, just this first verse, uh, especially the first four lines, I feel like I see that uh, inscribed on uh, so many Smiths things. The headstones of so many Smiths fans. <laughs> yeah. Last night, Joe said they love them. No, no, hope, hope. no harm. No harm. Just another false alarm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It. Tell me how long. Well, you know, the funny thing is, look how. how just how many lines are in the the song? Yeah, not very many. It's a five but minute it's so song. So dramatic. Yeah, <laughs> it's a five minute song. They they use that beginning to really build it. That's true. You know, to build that emotion, like the these odd sounds, the crowd kind of, and then the way, you know, and all that, and all of a sudden, whoop, and all of a sudden the the strings come in like boom, it just slaps you in the face. Yeah. Yeah. And um, calls you Susie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Kaz, keep going. Uh, Ignore Marcusy. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore Marcusy. <laughs> what What did uh, Mar call the synthesize the synthesi synthesizer Synthesi parts that he used as the orchestra? The, it was like yeah, the orchestra's. The, uh, um, oh, it's the guitar in here. orchestra. No, no. Oh, the uh, oh, you're talking about the yeah, the thing that they. Yeah, that's the uh, interesting thing is that they don't actually. This is all synths. You know, they didn't actually use. Uh, um, it's in here. Somewhere. It's in the middle then. Oh yeah, it might be. Um, performed by Orchestrasia Ardwick, <laughs> which is where uh, Johnny Marr grew up, is Ardwick in uh, England. So it's really just a clever little, uh, clever Shout little... Shout out to the hometown? Yeah. Okay. And what's that What's that called? Um, a pseudonym? Pseudonym? Let's, yeah. let's uh, turn it up a little. So you're coming towards the end. Johnny had a little, you know, a little more guitar. But this is Steven Street's idea to end it with just the fade out with the, just the orchestra to really make it dramatic. So good. Yeah. Like, there's just something about that song that you just can't li not like it. I yeah. And uh, it's just so, yeah, so dramatic. And even though it's, like, kind of, like, obvious Morsi, it's so good that you're just like, I love this song. Yeah. And sometimes if you're if you're in a breakup or whatever, you're kind of, you can imagine her, <laughs> you know, crying over it and singing this song. Yeah, you yeah. did that to me so many times when you stole all my girlfriends. I'm like, I really dreamt last night somebody loved me, and then Mark came hey, along. 
Don't flatter yourself. <laughs> you say all my girlfriends? Okay, all one of them. <laughs> all girlfriends? All girlfriend. And she was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is, as far as I, as far as I know, a lot of people's favorite Smith song. Um, and it's, I yeah. can see why it's a masterpiece. Oh, wasn't, yeah. wasn't it a single? Yeah, I think it was the last single that they ever yeah. released. Um, or at least... Well, it's the last single that they released from the album. Yeah, and then they reissue ones later. And which we'll talk about here in a second. Oh, yeah, this we stupid, will. stupid uh, paint of but picture. What Mark was saying is, I believe this is the only album of the Smiths where Stephen Street actually gets a producing credit. Uh, because the other times he's the engineer. Yeah. Uh, so, in when they did Meet His Murder, he gets an engineering credit, and then Queen is Dead, he gets an engineering credit, and then a postcard from Morrissey uh, thanking him for doing such a wonderful job on The Queen is Dead, and finally he gets that producing credit. That's right. He does, yep. he does an awful lot, and, you know, I feel like uh, if there should be uh, a fifth Smith to be considered, it shouldn't be Craig Gannon, but rather Stephen Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I would agree with that. Um, I hear, hear, hear. We're all in agreement. Here, I hear you. Okay. Thanks, Mark. So next. Okay. Oh, wait, I just want to play really quick. Uh, uh, did I say you could? I I just I'm asking for permission. <laughs> is this is this on the script? I don't know. He always goes. Listen to this. Script. This is what the early the earliest recording that. This is one of the rejected songs, but people say that this should have been put in instead of uh, what is this happy song? Heavy track, yeah. Heavy track. It's kind of like a really a good jam. Anyway, turn it, turn it up. Oh, pretty cool. This could have been pretty cool. So this could have been. I don't know. Morsi yeah. dismissed it, but you know. Why? That was a good song. I know it is, but. Listen to his stuff it now. He's doing the same thing. Why well, now? Oh, you went. Is there something at the end? I, I think so. Oh, where he says something at the end? Yeah. I don't think he did. I don't, I don't think on this one he's supposed to say, like, so screw. Oh, maybe. Ah. Uh, well, cut off right before. Off. Anyway, at the end. There, he says, because uh, I read it yeah, in the book, he's like, oh, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Johnny really liked that one. But so that that's one that, that's their first uh, recording in the studio Yeah. that they did, but Morrissey rejected that one. Oh, for Strange Ways? Yeah. Oh. It's funny because uh, Morrissey would, they would record stuff and Morrissey, um, Oh, what would be sitting in like would the be, annex? Well, yeah, he'd be because it was a it was a home studio. Yeah, drinking so his uh, just he'd be watching TV and stuff. Yeah, just kind of drinking his Boone's Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Boone's Farm. <laughs> no, uh, but but if it was in America. So you're drinking basically, slits. but the slits. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> but uh, so and then uh, Stephen Street would come with the cassette, you know, because Johnny Marr. You know, they they'd all be working together, and then they'd bring he'd bring the cassette to to Morrissey, Morrissey, and more. Yo, know, what do you think? And Morrissey, go, oh, I don't like this. I like this, and this is kind of weird. They should have just beat up Morrissey. They should have just beat up Morrissey. And at the time too, they were having trouble. <laughs> uh, one thing that was going on in the studio is uh, Ken Friedman. Finally, they had gotten a manager, an American manager that Johnny Marr really liked. Uh huh. And this is kind of just this is all part. Of, the, of the buildup, but uh, Ken Friedman would would come by the studio quite often, and they start, you know, Morrissey and, and the other guys start getting pissed because, uh, or, or actually, Mike Joyce and Andy Rourke started getting upset because he would take he would take uh, Morrissey and Mar into another room and talk to them about the business and stuff, and Joyce and and Rourke were just out, you know, left out in the cold. Yeah. So they, you know, they'd have to sit there for a couple hours and do whatever while that was happening. 
Uh, but Johnny Marr was super happy to have Ken Friedman because finally somebody was taking control, taking the, the weight off his shoulders because basically what Johnny Marr was, he was the manager. Yeah. He was having to do all this stuff. Anyway. Yep, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, so that was one of the rifts though, that started being caused. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. So what you were saying earlier was they should have just beat Morrissey up. I think there's a quote from Johnny Marr a little earlier in the uh, in the Smiths, uh, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Lifespan, where uh, someone asked him, someone asked Johnny Marr what Morrissey's deal was, and Johnny Marr said, "You know, I really don't know. Personally, I just think he needs a good humping." <laughs> That's right. Probably Somebody true. Somebody should have just given it to him, but it didn't happen, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he never had no one ever. Yeah. He didn't, well, yeah. but guess what? I've come to wish you an unhappy birthday. They did come around and wish him an unhappy birthday. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> unhappy birthday to you. <laughs> then he wrote a song about it. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> I, th you know, it's funny because this is the first sign of Morsi writing obvious lyrics yeah. of his later career. Yeah. But this one's cute enough that it's... But it's like, if you listen to his stuff now, it's very straightforward, obvious, you know. Like I spent the day in bed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is the first real uh, sign of that that writing style that he later embraces, or now embraces. I wonder when this was written. Well, you know what Mar the companion song This is recorded March, April, 1987. I was like, oh, maybe it was May. Yeah. You know, during his birthday. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it was an anticipation of it. Well, the funny thing is, is the companion song to this is actually on Morrissey's solo album. It's not your birthday anymore. Exactly. What? The companion song to this is... It's not your birthday anymore? It's not your birthday anymore. From years of refusal. Yeah. I refuse to listen no, it, to that album it, for years. Well, <laughs> so anyway... See what I did there? I took it. Okay, Mark. I twisted it. Okay, Marcus. <laughs> Dude, are you going to hand me a note card, too? <laughs> yeah. I'm writing one right now. But anyway, anyway, the song, you know, um, Loved and Lost, and some may say, when usually it's nothing, surely you're happy, it should be this way. I say, no, I'm going to kill my dog. And may the line sag heavy and deep tonight. Why is there two X's? Or three, three X's? I don't, I don't know why. Like... Maybe you know, like you know actually, yeah. in the, I think it's in this one that they're uh, actually on the lyrics um, at the end. There's yeah, a bunch that of kiss, 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 kiss. Those are kisses. Yeah. XO, XO. That's why they put them there. But see, that that's what I'm saying. And then if you go to the newer song, yeah, see, it's which we can do so really quick. Kisses. Let me go up to it. I'll get I'll get to it, Mark. Don't come worry. on, Steve. So then we have. Years of Refusal. Yeah, Years of your Refusal, and then you have this one. Okay. It's not your birthday anymore. See, listen. Did you really think we meant all of those silky sentimental things that we said? Oh my gosh. So, so in so this, this one. He's saying, we've come to wish you an unhappy birthday because you're evil and you lie. And if you should die, we, I might feel slightly sad, but I won't cry. And then in this one, he's saying, it's not your birthday anymore. Do you really think all the nice things we said about you yesterday really meant anything? Or was it because it was your birthday? Sort of, sort of like this is, be, this is the day before and that song is the day after. Not a Beatles song? Huh? They say it's your birthday. Da 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 da. Oh yeah. That's the best part of um, sixteen candles. I love that. And then she's like, stop. Hey, Ellie, whatever goes in there. Hey, hey Jude. Jude. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so anyway, that's it. But I'm uh, saying like this is like some of his most obvious lyrics right up front. But it's clever. I, I love. Yeah. Uh, I said no. Then I shot myself. And then he goes, so drink, drink, drink and be ill tonight. Drink up and you know. But he, the whole reason he's coming to wish him a ha- unhappy birthday is because they left him behind. Yeah. It's from the one he left behind. That's what he, he says at the end. So then I... Ooh. Yeah, here's the thing. Like, it is Morrissey being obvious, but as well, uh, it it kind of works in a way uh, because of how the music works with it. Like, it gets slower and, like, it picks back up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's listen to a little bit more of it. Okay. Just a little bit. All right, I got to get it queued back up. Yeah, it's really so drink, drink, drink and be ill tonight. And then also. And then. Oh. I love it, yeah. I mean, this, this and is then such here, a... Skip forward a little bit more. Ooh. Or actually, just keep it, just keep it. I like that, the little, uh, behind. Yeah, a little crack in his voice. You know what? Oh, I wanted to say something about Last Night I Dreamt. Uh-huh. And okay. And I, I, I just thought of it. But that was actually M- Morrissey's first take on this singing it. Really? Yeah. Really? He, yeah. He just... All, actually, most of his stuff was his first, 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 second. Yeah. First or second, maybe third takes. He, he never really would spend a lot of time because he he would build up all that emotion yeah he, and then spend it all in the first uh yeah that, three takes. that's what they said he came in he had you know he'd have to kind of work up the yeah like you said uh the nerve almost you know to say okay i'm ready i'm gonna do it and then boom just give it all there okay so so the last song for this Smith for this episode is a long one okay it's paint a vulgar picture, right? Uh huh. It is five and a half minutes, and it is one of his most, I would say, hypocritical songs ever. It's true. Wow. Even even while he was with the Smiths, this is one of the most hypocritical songs ever. What do you mean? While he was with the Smiths? Okay. Even while he was with the Smiths. Defend yourself after we play. <laughs> okay. I love. I love the music in this. Oh, yeah. The music is awesome on this one. See, that's the riff that I always use. Okay, turn down a little bit. This is okay. So let's, but then we'll okay. turn it back up when he gets to the yeah, singing it's, it's part. Five and okay, a half here it comes. Here it comes. I love the part where he's like, BBC, I, I, I BBC, MTV. BPI, MTV, BBC. Please, then, please, please, them, then, please, please. I love whenever he does those little, like, almost, not raps, but little parts where he strings words together, you know, sing so, song. Yeah, so this is also about Elvis a little bit. I mean, Elvis has died, and uh, what's the record company going to do? Well, instead, they are going to make money because they own things, and so he was. So the record company is going to start putting out all this stuff. The reason I say this is one of his most hypocritical songs is because <laughs> reissue, yeah. Repackage, repackage. So when he the the line where he says, um, "I was fawning, I was boring, just a child from those ugly new houses who could never begin to know, who could never really know." Best of, most of, satiate the need, slip them into different sleeves. That's exactly what he did. Boy, he, he didn't do that with the Smiths, though. Yes, yeah, he did. No, not, not, not when they were still together. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? What, what do you Louder think than Bob's <laughs> and, and uh, World Won't Listen is. It's the same dang songs. The- yeah, but that, <laughs> those are their best albums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not saying no, anything I'm bad. Saying- but you can't come out with the song and say, well, it's all the record company's doing for doing this. And it's like, wait a second. Okay, exactly. That's what you're doing. I mean, Hot Full of Hollow? 
Okay, so you have all these singles, and then they're like, "Yeah, we'll just do a compilation." You know what I was thinking? What? We should we should get little uh, pins, or I guess that would be a badge, but that's just a tacky badge, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I, and I'm not. No, I, I, I'm, I see not, I'm saying. not saying that it it was a bad move. No, it was a great move. What I'm saying is, Hat Full of Hollow is a great album, my favorite. Yeah. Right. Talk to the mic. And, and so. Talk to the, yeah. <laughs> and so you're like, Kaz. Like, so no. it's it's not that it's it's a oh, bad pause, thing. Pause, pause, pause. Oh, sorry. So you want to save that solo? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that it, it's not that I think they were they were mistakes to put out those albums. It surely wasn't. I no. mean, obviously, if you couldn't get all the singles together, Hat Full of Hollow is a great great album to buy instead, and that's fine. That but you can't come out and say these record companies are so bad. That this is what they do. They just repackage, relabel, slip them into a different sleeve, send them out, you know, make more money on I it. And you're feel doing, deceived. Yeah, you're yeah, doing so the, the same. People there, the people that were, I, I see what you're saying. People that are there from the beginning are, oh, well, there's a new album, but it's not really a new album if yeah. you've been buying all their singles. Like, how many Best of Smiths albums are there now? Oh, too many. Oh, well, that's what I'm saying. That's, that, I mean, I, that, that's like way after. You're see, right. That's way after. There's best one, best two. But, uh, but quite Sound honestly, yeah, but quite honestly, uh, I mean, that's the reason why we have the New York vocal that, version of this charming band. Yeah, but all those, all those best subs and stuff. Everybody had they, to buy them. No, they, 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 Warner Brothers bought out all the things, so that's I, all yeah, that. I, I, I know. I but now, but now, but now. We do have all the new, oh, the Queen is Dead, but actually, oh, by the way, the new Queen is Dead release. Pick it up. Pick it up. It's really or good. Yes. Pick up the second disc. You know, yeah. you don't have to pick up the whole thing. Yeah. At least, but. Yeah, disc one is just remastered yeah. of the yeah. original. And, but so, the know, second part is all the demos, and there's some really ge yes. big gems in there. Not only that, it also comes with uh, a live concert. From Boston, Massachusetts, yep. and it's one of the best recordings. Oh, the whole ever. the whole thing's a concert from. Uh, I thought so it was just part it, of it, it. it. It's got three things. So it's uh, the Queen is Dead remaster, and then the demos from the Queen is Dead, and then live in Boston. And live in Boston is great. Let me tell you. Live in Boston. Yes, it is. Well, so okay. definitely it. There are things on that reissue that are worth it. Yes. That, so there, there are. So, so there, when we're I talking mean, about it's thirty that, years yes. later, it, and nobody's died from the Smiths yet. So the the thing. So I'm saying it's not. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying it's not the record company going yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I understand promoting it because it's some really good stuff. Yeah. Um, but actually, there's a whole there's a whole verse that was cut out. Um. Yes. Like Let this me, one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. That, okay. It was over five I know, minutes long. But, okay. Whenever you hear you hear uh, Johnny Mars guitar solo, which is right here, that was supposed to be another verse. Oh. And I got the lyrics in it. Okay. What are the lyrics? Um. Dang it. Well, now I, I have the lyrics. I had the lyrics, although I didn't. Um, it's like Mark show. It's like Mark showing up with a big plate of food, and he's like. I got food for you, but it's only 25%. Yeah, because he's been eating it all. <laughs> oh, yeah, here it is. So the extract, the lyrics that were taken out were uh, anecdotes and stories. Oh, yes, we were so close, you know. So why did the body lie for seven days before someone passed his way? I don't, I don't know how. It, but that, they cut it out. They put the solo in because it was just... I don't know, too dark, but the the guy yeah. ended up dying alone. Nobody yeah. even noticed Which he was dead. Which wasn't Elvis. I mean, Elvis did. Elvis died on the toilet. Yeah, Elvis died on the porcelain that's, throne. Oh, by the way, that's the way I want to go. <laughs> that's same here. Because I'm like, you know what? Not many people know this, but when you die, your body relaxes and you evacuate all your things. So I'm like, you know, so you're going to be pooping your pants. So yeah. if you die on the toilet, it's just like, hey, just flush after me. <laughs> So Elvis, good job. You know, f funny thing, <laughs> funny thing, and, and this is the truth here. I, when I, when we lived in Southern California, we lived in Orange County, and I would drive from Irvine down to Santa Margarita, and I would ride on a motorcycle, 
and if I had to go to the bathroom, I would not go before I left because I knew if you die, it just you know blows everything out your body. Boom. And I was and I was on a motorcycle, and I'm like, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna leave a right old mess for all the paramedics like, to deal with when they get there. When he died, he raised up six inches. <laughs> Make sure that they have the best time so, with my corpse. <laughs> that's like, that's oh, like people on death row. <laughs> <laughs> like they give them a big meal before they die. Like I want tons of beans and, and burritos. Oh my gosh, you will not believe what happened. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, so <a> true gas chamber. <laughs> so basically, this is this. Um, what this is is all about. After this, this guy's died though. Like the record company trying to still make yeah. as much money yeah, off of his dead body, his yeah. Because I, my mom, uh, my mom and my dad, when they're when they were married, uh, one day my mom called my dad crying, and uh -huh. he he's like, "What's going on?" She's like, "The king's dead." <laughs> Speaking of Elvis, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she cried up crying about Elvis dying. And, you know, it was such yeah. a huge thing. It was, you know, but uh, and. You know, Elvis had so many different careers, you know, where they were trying different, uh, like his Vegas thing, and yeah. you know, where they're exploiting him and stuff. So, anyway, they it's did, just they, interesting. They did, the, they did the same with Michael Jackson when he died. Oh, yeah. I couldn't yeah. believe the freaking coverage on that. I was like, okay, he died. I'm sorry, he's dead. And he, yes, he was a great artist. But come on, we don't need 60 hours worth of TV coverage of this. You're, uh, well, you would rather sing Unhappy Birthday to, to him? No. <laughs> no. I wanted it and just let him lie in peace. It's like, I hate the press because of it. I honestly, honestly well, the, hate the, the press the, because of it. It's like I they know, have the, to get their cameras up in front of everybody's yeah, faces. That, that, okay, this goes to a new Morrissey song about spent the day in bed yeah. or stop watching the news because. It's the it's the twenty four hour press press yeah. cycle. You know, it used to be you hang out with headlines for the day. There you go. But now it's like they have to keep talking, coming up with things. Well, well, the, but, the funny thing is, is when you talk about this, is in the nineties. I think it was the nineties or the early two uh, thousands, the early aughts, right? America sent troops to an African country that was dealing with uh, inner inner turmoil and 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 tons of warlords and everything. And I. I forget where it is. I want to say Mogadishu, but I'm not sure that that's it. But anyway, they sent these forces to the African coast. And as the troops were coming off the ship, you know, on their landing parties to, to get into the beach, the first wave that they were hit with was the press. The press was on the freaking beach. <laughs> as the troops were coming in, there was the press. And they had to weave in between be, the. Tr oh, I thought it was supposed to be like a secret mission in the it, press. Well, it there. wasn't. It wasn't like a secret mission, but it wasn't something no, that was like yeah, advertised. But yeah, well, it's, every press. You know, it's had like to the be Gulf there. War. Anyway, yeah. Kaz won't know this, but anyway, <laughs> so we're so yeah. The whether it's the music company, the press, or whatever, they just cling on to this thing and they try to make money yeah. off of it. So yeah. I don't know. What um, about this line, Kaz? What about this? Haven't one? earned it yet, baby. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a line in the song. Go ahead, Kaz. Um, so, not not many people know this because not many people will listen to me. But uh, <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> but "Paint a Vulgar Picture" is actually my favorite Smith song. Believe it or not. Really? It, it's about neck and neck with rubbering. But um, I I really relate to like a lot of this uh, a lot of the teenage fantasies. Mm that uh, Morrissey plays with in this song and I kind of believe that this song is based off of a mix of like Elvis and Mark Bull and Morrissey's own imagination because when uh, Morrissey had the chance to go see T-Rex and Mark Bolin and he went up to Mark Bolin to give him uh, to like ask for an autograph or something and according to Morrissey so like it's Morrissey Mark Bolin just kind of like shrugged them off and kept mm -hmm. walking, uh, and he had no real way of knowing, you know. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I definitely can relate to this song because I mean, being such a uh, Morsey fanboy, yeah, you know, I, I always 
you know, you're, it, you're a big you know he's the one singing the song but it was I always thought of it yeah. as me and Morrissey you know yeah so it's like I'm this and uh, just so, a child yeah. from the ugly new houses well yeah and this would have been around the time when they were uh, rebuilding Manchester so Morrissey uh, I can't remember if Morrissey was in uh, was uh, if Morrissey moved to one of the newer houses, to one of the new yeah, they he, he had moved they uh, <coughs> to a newer part of town. Well, yeah. not not if not, uh, part of town. not if we use England as mine as the uh, reference point. Well, let's not use England as yours. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I it was no, a good movie. It was just no. But um, just, one of the lines yeah. in here though um, is uh, you just haven't uh, heard it yet, baby. Uh, no. Uh, where the where the person says uh, I don't care where you're going. I'm trying to find where that is. In my heart, I begged, please take me with you. I don't please care where me. you're going. Yeah, that, that's actually something that a, a fan said to who who's uh, uh, New York Dolls, the Johansson or David Johansson. Yeah, some some girl. Buster Coin Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Whenever Morrissey finally met him and. Uh, Johansson was was like, have you heard my? Have you ever listened to my Buster Poindexter stuff? <laughs> <was just> like, no. <laughs> like anyway, but uh, uh, in one of Morsey's reviews on the New York Dolls, he he cited a, a girl saying, you know, oh, take me with you. I don't care where you're going. Yeah. So anyway, that's from that. And uh, anyway. Um, the, yeah, this is a long song, or actually, it's not that long. It's five. It's but five it's, minutes and and change. Yeah. Here's the thing. It's a very very simple song. Yeah. yeah. But with lots of lyrics. Like, it's just doing A D G. But I like A D or, minor G A. Oh, one thing is that well, no, he, I mean, look, one, look at this. Actually, as well. Johnny Marr changes uh, in this song between verses. He look he how changed, many times it just repeats. I know, but I'm saying. You'll see an actual key change. Yeah. That oh wait I don't. No, that, there's at, a key the, change. The key change key you know. It doesn't seem to. Be, that's just the way they have it. But it's supposedly a key change between songs. So it'll kind of yeah. build up that that emotion. Yeah. And uh, um, I I just like the uh, just these best of most of say she just these rhyming things world tour media or I have that in Belgium. Uh, so as I have. Well as little so my guitar jam. case is uh, like a brand or something called World Tour, and under mm -hmm. that I wrote in marker Media Whore, <gasps> but it's uh, like extra dark so you can't see it. But I know it's there. I know You're what I am. Naughty. You so, are a media whore. All right, so oh, we gotta we yes. gotta wrap it up. Oh wait, wait, wait. I want to point so, out one more, one more. Line. Yeah, okay. I, I like uh, at the end. I yeah, dance my I legs think. down to the knees. You know, just by yourself. You're in your uh, your new that your was house. Me. That was me when I was a kid. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and you're just like so into it. And whatever. You know what? If you don't like you, you don't like me. I love your music. They cannot taint you in my eyes. Yeah. They, they cannot, cannot touch, touch you, you now. Me and my true love will never meet again. Okay, guys. <sighs> you, you have the last thought. That was that was it. That's my last thought. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Idiots. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> so, okay, well, uh... What about the wars? What about the wars? <laughs> hey, man. Let's have a discussion here. More to say. You want to know what my favorite uh, lyric is from the, from the new album? What? It's when Morrissey... I think it's in I Wish You Lonely, where he's just going... No! 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 <laughs> that's like the... That's the chorus... For uh, I wish you, I wish you lonely. It repeats a couple times. <laughs> we're gonna have to find that. Okay. All right. All right, All right so guys. Think, so right now, we're gonna, gonna, um, we're gonna leave on. Let's, let's leave paint? on. Yeah, paint it. Okay. Paint it vulgar. Okay. The guitar is all out. Okay. This is this charming Smiths cast with the handsome hooligans. Mark. Kaz. Steven. Thank you. One more to go. All right. You can do it. Woohoo. All right. Best of, most of.
There it is. I just don't know what rhymes.